Well, howdy doody everybody. It's been a little while and a while back I promised uh, to start doing some blacksmithing videos and um, about set up to where I can start doing those. So we'll just jump right into this. I'll show you what I got. Okay, this is... Yeah, let me get it right. Okay, now this is a Champion Forge and a Champion Blower. Those are both, they're both actually antiques, but there were many, many, many of these made back in the day. And this particular type of uh, forge here was very common in steel erection back in the old days when they used rivets. You'd find iron workers using a lot of these to heat the rivets up as they put the steel together. Um, underneath here, you see this mechanism. Um, that's, this was a self-contained unit at one time. I have two of these forges and both of them basically the same. But some of the gear works are still on this one and all that was was um, right here was uh, a handle that, um, a bellows that, uh, that you just simply pumped and it ran this ratcheting gear works down here and it, the air came up. But I, all that's gone, I had to redo this so I have a, a blower separate, an old champion hand crank blower, and all this is, I put it together with uh, exhaust, flexible exhaust from uh, the auto parts store and a few pipe fittings, and the coal, will, coal dust will accumulate in here, and of course you just take the cap off to dump it. There's other ways of doing that. There's a lot of blacksmithing stuff on YouTube, and some of it's good information. Um, I'll pause it and get set up and we'll see. I've, I need to, the first thing I need to make is a hardy, hardy tool and we'll see how that goes. By the way, a lot of people think that it may be a big investment getting into blacksmithing, but it's really not. You can get into it for almost nothing. As a matter of fact, there's some very interesting videos on YouTube. Uh, about blacksmiths in other parts of the world that are um, do fabulous work that have almost nothing. It's really astonishing. I'll try to find one in particular of an Indian blacksmith that's uh, that's making bill hooks, which is a fascinating uh, video to watch. And I'll try to put a find the link and, and add it somewhere down the road. But here's here's something. I mean, right here, it's just those right there are two brake drums forges. And um, I got them for free. If, if uh, you know, you got to ask around. There's a lot of stuff that people are willing to give give away. Uh, sometimes it may cost you, but you can make uh, a brake drum forge, uh, even a small one. I, you know, out of small brake drums. But uh, there's there's a lot of ways. You can even do it just with a metal tray. Um, and there are some videos uh, on uh, the internet of how to do that. That anvil over there is a hay budding. It's an anvil I ordered from Kentucky. Uh, that's, that is a little bit of a costly item. There's no, no getting around that. But you don't have to have an actual anvil. You can use um, just pieces of steel. Uh, there's uh, one blacksmith on the internet that even talks about using a 16 pound sledge for an anvil. And for example, this right here. Now this. This is a piece of plate steel, 62 pounds, two inches thick, that I'm going to use for my upsetting anvil. So there's, you can improvise and do it on, on an amazingly simple level and uh, without very much in, investment. Um, let me set up a few more things and we'll see. Oh, one other thing is coal. Um, in some parts of the country, there just isn't any, and you've, you've got to get it off of the uh, internet, and it's very expensive to buy that way. And I don't, I can't really give any advice. I don't want to uh, hawk anybody. So there, you just got to find it yourself. I'm also going to be trying to do these videos in between trains. There's high train traffic here behind the cottage. But uh, by the way, that anvil over there is the same age as the cottage, 1895. That's one reason in particular I wanted it. But I'll be right back. Ooh-wee, those trains are loud. I'll try to filter them out as much as possible. Um, anyway, getting, the coal, getting back to the coal. Ah, here comes another one. Um, at first I bought it off the internet. 
but uh, now I, draw, I have to drive 200 miles to get it, but I get it at such a good price that it's well worth the trip. Um, but there are sources on uh, the internet for it. It's just the shipping it will run you three times what the cold does. But uh, we'll be back. Okay, on the subject of coal again. Um, you can use charcoal and it works very well. The only thing is that uh, you'll go through much more of it. Uh, the burn rate's a lot faster, but you can do make fantastic uh, heat with... Uh, you can make 3,000 degree heat with charcoal the same as you can with coal. You're just going to go through more of it. So, you know, when you weigh that against the cost of shipping, I don't know, six of one, half dozen of the other, but if you live anywhere near a coal source, you've got it made. Um, I myself, of course, you want to burn bituminous, but this, I myself, I'd love to get a load of anthracite. But uh, that's, uh, that, that right there is very far away and just impractical. But uh, anyway, we'll get this going. And uh, starting it is, is some people use, um, uh, some people use paper. I'm just going to use some cedar. You want to know why this camera keeps shaking, I'll show you. This is Marty. He is a feral cat, but uh, he loves me because uh, him and I go back a ways. When he was a kitten, he uh, was blind. And uh, I, uh, I just started washing his face. And uh, I did that every day. He hated it. And I did it every day, though, until his eyes started opening up. They had horrible, horrible infections. Now he just won't leave me alone. And he keeps rubbing against the tripod here, and that's what's messing it up. Anyway, let me see if I can get it going. I can get it to hold right. It's a beautiful, beautiful October fall day. just beautiful today. Now if I can do this thing without the wind blowing it out every time. Almost had it there. I guess if I have to, I can go get my barbecue lighter. But all you got to do is get it going a little bit. Almost had it then. it may be going. You can use fire starter or whatever you want. I think I'm going to have to get my barbecue grill lighter. I'll be back. There it's going. Okay, I'm just going to keep adding, uh, once it's going a little bit, all you have to do is add a little bit of air and then start piling the coal around it. And uh, it's really not that hard. Paper works well. Whatever, I just happen to have some kindling close by, so that's what I was going with. Uh, we'll get her going here a little bit. Okay, all you got to do is get it going a little bit like that. Just add some air. I prefer a hand crank blower. I have electric ones, but I have 
actually prefer this, and the reason being that uh, gives you a lot of control, a lot more uh, infinite control over the fire. And this particular Champion blower is a 400 uh, CFM. As you can tell, I'm just barely cranking it. That fire's getting going. So what we'll do is pop some coal around it. And one thing I have found out in the short time I've been doing this is you gotta condition the fire. And I'll explain more about that here in just a bit. A more accurate description of what I meant is you have to coke the fire. In other words, you can't just start blacksmithing right away because you're going to have to drive out some of these impurities, namely sulfur, moisture, things like that. And depending on the grade of coal you get, you can have a lot of these impurities or not very much. So we got we to gotta get her going and let it uh, coke a little while. And you see how much smoke we got coming. Well, I, got, I hopefully have uh, come up with something to deal with that, which I'll show in just a minute. Okay, here's my way of dealing with uh, with the smoke. Since we're this is an outdoor backyard uh, setup, uh, I have simply a homemade hood that fits right on this uh, forge. And then I put a piece of uh, eight inch smokestack on top of it. And as you can see, that fire is going real good. I guess I should mention, oh, I don't know. It, uh, a lot of people aren't gonna care about this, but have some consideration for your neighbors. This stuff stinks pretty bad sometimes. And uh, I, I'm fortunate that I don't uh, I don't have any neighbors where I'm at, and uh, you can tell that's going up pretty good. So by the time this smoke gets anywhere, it's pretty well diluted. But uh, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, I know if I didn't like this and I uh, lived right next door to somebody who did it all the time, it could be obnoxious. But Anyway, have some consideration for your neighbors. Uh, a lot of times you can just run your stack up high enough that the air will carry it away uh, and it won't go into other houses. Anyway, we're going to keep going here for a little bit. By the way, one way you can tell that your fire is coking, and if you notice, I just have a slow, steady turn on this. A hair dryer would work pretty well. Uh, I wouldn't advise you using your wife's hair dryer though. Go out and buy one, you can get one for 10 bucks. Anyway, uh, what I was going to say was the one way you can tell if the fire is coking is some, but not all, of the smoke is going to go away. Uh, once, you, once you drive a lot of the sulfur and moisture out. But all, I'm just doing a very slow, steady turn in it. And, the center of that fire right now is probably about 2,500 degrees. But I'm going to keep going a little ways and get it conditioned a little better because I want a really good bed of coals because the piece I, hardy piece I have to make is about one inch. Something interesting about that fire, it's coked up pretty well and as you can tell there's hardly any smoke. I mean just a little bit coming out of the stack. But just from that draw, I'm not adding any air. And that's, that's got that fire, just the draw has got the fire going great. Um, hammers and tongs. Um, don't let anybody tell you that you have to have this, that, or the other. Um, all you need is something that you can handle the pieces safely with and that you can do a good job of hammering with. You can do some fabulous work with ball peen hammers. And there are, you know, specialty blacksmithing hammers for, well, very specialized types of blacksmithing. But um, garage sales are a great place. eBay, uh, I, I bought a lot of mine on eBay. 
and because uh, I had something specific in mind. But uh, you can get sledges. I, the, uh, East Wing makes hammers that are good, good for blacksmithing. You can get them at hardware stores. Tongs you can buy from uh, farrier shops. You can also buy blacksmithing hammers from farrier shops. Um, all you got to do is just uh, get on the internet and type that in. Blacksmithing supplies, farrier supplies, and uh, you can get a good idea of what you might need or, or what would be good for you. Okay, here's what I'm going with. We're going to work this one inch piece. I'm going to try to make a hardy tool out of it. And uh, uh, we'll uh, see how it turns out. I'll try not to bore you with, you know, bunch of waiting. We'll just go ahead and put that in the fire and we'll let it cook a while and then it'll come back. By the time you add a little bit of coal it's gonna smoke up again but the hotter the fire the quicker it'll coat. And it's just something you just kinda gotta get a feel for. Get a handle on. This fire's going real good though. Okay, we should be there. Okay, right there's what we're looking for. Okay, I'm gonna put it back in and reposition the camera, and then we'll do some hammering. Okay, I'm going to start by drawing it down to the size of this hardy hole or something there close to that. Okay, back in the fire to cook a while. One thing you got to watch out for are these little things called uh, call them blister bugs, but they're pieces of coal that stick to the metal when you pull the piece out. And one of those things can jump right out on you. This is taking a lot of hammering. So uh, I'm going to do this in two videos. I'll just, because uh, I've gone all afternoon on this, and uh, it's going to take a lot more. But anyway, we'll uh, keep going at it, and if I have to do it, do it in two pieces, that's no problem. We'll we'll get it done.